Of all the four seasons in the year, the best, in my opinion, has to be the fall. School starts in the fall, basketball starts in the fall, and fashion just seems to get better during the fall. For today's video, we're gonna talk about the fall fashion trends that I'm excited about. If there are any trends that I forget to mention during the duration of this video, be sure to comment them down in the comment section and risk the community. We're all trying to learn, we're all trying to grow. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew to do it's nice to meet you. Let's talk about fall fashion trends. For a lot of people, myself included, the most important aspect of an outfit starts with what shoes you decide to wear. And when it comes to fall footwear, there are so many cool and interesting items within footwear that I'm absolutely loving. Starting off with the continuation of the emergence of outdoor focused footwear and trainers. Brands like Solomon have just dominated the emerging footwear scene, especially in the fall. And this autumn is no different. From models such as the ACS Pro Advanced, XT4, and XT6, I'm glad to see that these items have remained sticky year after year in the current trend cycle that we're a part of. Other noteworthy brands and products coming from this spectrum of footwear include ASICs and models such as the Gel NYC, Gel Flex Key, and the Gel Keanu. And in my opinion, ASICs is in one of the most peculiar situations as it relates to a footwear company trying to just take that next step up. To me, they always seem primed to take the casual sneaker, casual trainer, footwear marketplace by storm, but never actually accomplish this task. It's weird, in my head, they're always just one tier below what the Nikes, the Adidas's, the New Balances of the world are doing from a mass market, mass appeal standpoint. Regardless, other models that are in the mix include Nike's ACG footwear line and shoes like the Nike ACG Rufus 2. I've also been loving the footwear from these brands in particular this fall. Teva, Our Legacy, Norda, Hoka, Keen Footwear, and On Running. Just to name a few. Ever since moving to New York City, I feel like culture just slaps you in the face whenever you step outside your home. And when I've been walking around the city, observing and seeing what items of footwear are being worn, I'm seeing a lot, and I do mean a lot of this kind of outdoorsy, gorpy, uh, utilitarian, but like a mix between like hiking core, in the city type of look, especially when it comes to footwear. I also think that boot sneakers or sneakers that are very reminiscent of boots will continue to perpetuate in the culture. Our Legacy's Gabe boot, I mean sneaker, I mean boot, <laughs> is a great example of this. And you also have brands like Roa or ROA. That is another company that really pushes the boundary for what it means to have a sneaker or a boot or kind of like this combination of the two. And boot sneakers to me still really feel like outdoorism with a urban backdrop as the setting. The last trend that I see bubbling up is the recognition of Timberlands. Timberland has always been a pretty iconic boot brand company whether you decide to recognize it or not but it seems like there's a concerted effort on part by the brand as well as in the culture to highlight these boots something to note just so you know it is the 50 year anniversary of timberland's company as an entire boot company it is also the 50 year anniversary of the yellow boot which is the iconic six inch timberland the wheats the just most iconic version of Tim's. Like when you think about Tim's, you think about this boot and you're seeing a lot more of it being worn in more contemporary, more stylized, more interesting ways in fall 2023 fashion. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever considered picking up a pair of Tim's or if now you are considering picking up a pair because it feels like there's more energy behind the Timberland boot brand, the Timberland model. I said that that was the last footwear trend that I was gonna highlight, but I actually really need to talk about Uggs, but I think it deserves its own section, so let's move on. So we talked about footwear in a broad sense. Let's get more specific on a particular trend that I've been seeing. So let me paint this picture for you. Recently, I was watching a video by Suzy Lola, a very, very underrated fashion channel, fashion YouTube channel here on YouTube. And she was discussing this movement that I've personally seen myself, but couldn't put into words what exactly to call this sense of style? What, what, what to call this, this 
this thing in fashion. What to call this movement within fashion. It's predominantly in women's wear styling, but it's the pairing of track pants with heels. Heeled footwear has been incredibly popular and trendy in 2023. Whether it's kitten heels or chunky platform heels, heels have just been just very, very popular. Or rather, the modern rendition of 2023 heel styling has been really popular as well as really refreshing. And it makes sense as the weather gets colder, pairing various heels with different styles of warmer bottoms only seems natural. In Susie's video, she called it trackies with heels. I don't know what a trackie is. It might be like a British thing, but I'm just calling it track pants or cargo pants with heels, which you kind of saw a little bit in the spring and the summer of this year, but as it got too hot, you saw less and less of it. We're getting into colder weather. It makes sense to wear something that's a bit warmer, but you still wanna wear your heels. You still wanna wear your fire footwear. That's an interesting way to do it. Let me know what you think about this trend. Is it even a trend? Is it a, just a small, very niche thing that's happening? Or is it something that could come up from very niche culture and become a trend? Would you wear this? Would you let your girl wear this? I'm very, very curious to know your opinion about this one down in the comments. Next, I'm incredibly excited to see all of the kind of funky variants of headwear, especially beanies for the fall. To me, fall fashion is all about mixing function with beauty. And one of my favorite designers in this space, he's an independent designer, independent creative. His name is Bailey Goldberg, and he does a really fantastic job of doing exactly that. Beanies are at their core function. They are meant to warm your head up, right? But he does it in such a just playful manner that it really brings a lot of beauty, a lot of energy, and a lot of just fun to outfits. Last year, or rather last fall, winter, Sundays XYZ made waves with their checkered beanies. And the year before that, and something you still see a lot in 2023, is the skull cap beanies made super popular, in my opinion, by Arcteryx and the way that they did their beanies and the entire Arcteryx movement, which goes hand in hand with outdoorism and corp core and outdoor kind of aesthetics. You'll see variants of this type of headwear in so many different forms. One of my favorite that I saw recently was a, a bathing ape version of like a skull beanie, which Basically, a skull beanie is what I'm calling is a beanie that doesn't have like a fold in it. And Bape made a variant that kind of looks very similar to Arcteryx's, but it looks fire. And I think it looks really, really good. Um, you'll see that in the street where it looks. I'm, I guarantee it. If you haven't already, I guarantee you'll see something like that. And I think that's fire. I think it's pretty cool. Keeping the theme with funky fashion, I've seen a lot of really unique and interesting belt and belt accessories. If you're really keen on elevating your personal style, belts are an amazing way to differentiate someone who's at one tier in terms of their kind of style maturation and someone who's on a totally different sphere when it comes to their style maturation. Essentially, they're a great way to distinguish really thoughtful outfits. But when it comes to belting this year, I think that 2023 fall fashion is taking it just a step further. I saw versions of belts by a brand named Paloma Wool that totally recontextualized what I think when I think about a tool belt. Usually reserved for very functional workwear, these versions of stylized tool belts are so damn cool. Once again, I'm seeing them a lot of times in the context of being styled on women's wear. It'll make its way to men's wear at some point. I find this to be such a cool spark for fall 2023 fashion trends i mean look at this this is so interesting maybe it's not to you but i think it's pretty freaking cool and i'm excited about it to me this version of belting which is what i'm calling it i think that's like burping but like in reverse belting i don't know this version of belting is so much more tasteful than the 90s kind of sitcom era fanny pack or side bag that we've all grown so accustomed to. To me, it feels really modern and really cool and it brings something entirely new to my brain for one and to the fashion space at large. At least I think, I mean, I really haven't seen this before. Have you? I've also seen really fun belts and we've seen funky belts for a while. This one by Needles has caught my eye and has been on my wish list for some time now. And in the past, in fact, when I did the best and worst trends video earlier this year, I talked about how there are so many different variants 
that are presenting themselves as belt options. I've seen like headphone earbuds as belt options, which is really interesting. I've seen, you know, obviously shoe strings have been an option for a long time if you like want to go to that route. But yeah, it's, it's just kind of fun thinking about all the possibilities when it comes to accessorizing the waistband on your pants or on your shorts, which is cool. Let's get a word in for today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you interested in making your very own website for a brand or creative project? Squarespace offers a comprehensive amount of features to make the website that you've always dreamed of. If you want to sell your products direct to consumer or if you just want to display your body of work, Squarespace makes it easy to do that and more. Currently, I'm using my Squarespace website as a hub for all of my content and all of my social media platforms. And if you need a design to help nudge you into creating your first website, this is your sign. Visit squarespace.com slash drewjoiner for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's touch on three brands of interest for this section. Starting off with Oakley. Oakley, to me, has done a fantastic job of harnessing nostalgia, pedigree, and intrigue, especially in order to win over the fan base of a younger generation. From its footwear to its iconic sunglasses, Oakley just seems to have a ton of energy coming out of its camp and energy being pushed towards it for this fall. Another brand that continues to be synonymous with autumn is Uggs. Every year, Uggs rolls out some rendition of a product that always seems to catch fire. This year, it's all about the low top platform Uggs or just low top Uggs in general. And last, the third brand that I wanna mention is a brand that I feel like is losing maybe a bit of steam because it was very much so on its high horse, but that brand is Stussy. Now, Stussy is an awesome brand. And when I say it's losing steam, it doesn't mean by any means that it's less cool or it's not as valuable or it isn't as good. That's not what this channel is about. I'm not here to shame you. But I do think as Stussy kind of falls down from peak interest and peak popularity from where it was maybe earlier this year, heading into the fall, you're still going to see a lot of Stussy. You're still going to you're still going to see a lot of eight ball kind of fleeces and iconography walking around walking around in New York city for one or just online if you're scrolling online you're gonna see a lot of it and yeah i mean that's essentially the crux of it i think stussy while very very trendy very very popular in 2023 you'll see that kind of popularity and trendiness translate to the fall slash autumn heading into the winter and we'll see what happens in 2024 with stussy all right next i also talked about this in the best and worst trends of the year video that i made a few months ago but wide pants are the current meta for trendy pants in 2023 and that'll continue to persist during the fall whether they are jeans cargo pants pleated trousers trousers sweatpants baggy wide voluminous pants fall under the guise for what it means to be trendy what it means to be stylish as a young person as as youth culture in 2023 all right now there are two trendy genres within the fall fashion bubble fall fashion time period that i want to highlight and the reason why i want to talk about genres as a whole is because there's far too many pieces to highlight within this kind of niche of fashion it would take up too much time so i just want to talk about the genre at scale the first genre has a mixed match of names but it's oftentimes referred to as modern ivy modern prep or office chic and there might be a slight variation between those terms, but I'm kind of grouping them or clumping them together. To me, this is one of the coolest ways to display your personal taste. Most people live and work in jobs that have standardized guidelines for how to dress. What modern prep or office chic styles do is allow for individuals working in these settings to explore fashion under the context of their working environment. That to me is really unique because I love being able to play with real world constraints but still somehow with creativity with enthusiasm with curiosity come up with a unique way to display my personality in a place that traditionally may not recognize or may not have had that personality displayed in that way through fashion it's all about fashion it's all about showing who you are through your clothing and, and 
bringing a little bit of beauty to a place that may feel mundane, if that makes sense. Hopefully I'm not just talking gibberish. The second genre that I want to highlight in this section is really a item or a category unto its own. It is the hooded cardigan. I first started recognizing hooded cardigans back when I was a kid watching Little Red Riding Hood. Who remembers Little Red Riding Hood? <laughs> it's a joke. I'm kidding. In all seriousness, I remember first seeing hooded cardigans styled in a more kind of interesting way through the women's wear, women's through the women's influences that I follow on social media. But I do think hooded cardigans are a non-specific type of trend, meaning that anyone can wear them if you know how to pull it off, if you have that kind of if you have that in your bag, for a lack of better words. I think hooded cardigans are interesting. They're something that feels a bit weird because it's almost like a hooded you know how you know how some people wear like hooded sleeveless tank tops to the gym hooded cardigans is we'll see how it goes it, it could either go really good or really bad is what i'm saying and i think the really bad version of hooded cardigans are the hooded sleeveless tank tops sorry if you wear those i am so sorry they're just not trending um but you're still really cool. I, I would still be your friend if you wore that. Only only if you could bench press 250 though. Only if you could bench press 250. Colors are a very underrated subject when it comes to understanding how to improve your personal style within the fashion world. There are three colors that tend to trend in the fall and they are round, round? And they are red, brown, and olive. Red is typically a pop of red used very tastefully. Brown is a more tonal look, meaning that it kind of dominates a part of the outfit and is worn more during the kind of gray, gross days of the year. And I would say the same goes for the color olive. I love each of these colors and I can't wait to see how I decide to kind of pull them off. Like even right now, like this top that I'm wearing, it doesn't really have any of those colors in it, but it, it feels like it does. You know what I mean? It kind of kind of feels like like it feels like it does. Right. Do you hate any particular color? I find hating a color to be an interesting concept. I can't really get behind it. Maybe there's colors that I don't like, but I don't know. Do you hate any colors when it comes to styling in particular? Do you hate to wear a particular color? Last but not least, we have the cuffification of pants. Yes, I made that word up. No, we do not have to argue about it at all. It's a word, cuffification. People have always cuffed their pants, but they weren't always considered to be cool. And right now in 2023, I think there's a bit of momentum building for the cuffification of pants, especially if you do big cuffs, like dramatic, demonstrative cuffs. This seems to be directly correlated with the fact that Pants in general just seem to be getting wider and bigger. So if you cuff your pants and your pants are already bigger, naturally the cuff will also look bigger and just be larger, right? And this probably has to do with the fact that pants are bigger. No one knows how to get the right size. So their pants are too big. Then they have to cuff their pants and they're just rolling with it. And that's, I love that. That's, that's what fashion is about. Just roll with it. Just roll with the punches and see how it goes. It becomes a trend. Bing, boom, ba, boom, ba. <laughs> All right, I'm getting tired. <laughs> what do you think about this year's fall trend wrap up? Did I miss some trends that you were excited about? Let me know down in the comments. I am looking forward to reading your responses. And as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2023. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you from me. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll be on to home. Peace. Yo, what is good, post vivid? Here are the fist bumps for the one time. Here's one. Bop. You know, you guys have been good to me. I'm gonna be good to you. Here's the second fist bump. <laughs> Bop. Thank you guys so much for staying to the end of the video. I appreciate it immensely. You have no idea how much it means to me that you guys stay and watch the videos. Try something new, okay? I'm realizing that New York City, it's not as sunny and as just weatherly pleasant as Colorado right and so i have a window right here and i, I like using natural light I, I love natural light so i set the camera up whoa that was weird i set the camera up i have my microphone set up in this way i have another microphone over there i have everything going it's going well um but let me know what do you think about this kind of setup like obviously i have a desk here i type you know I'd be, oops 
I'd be typing over there. Regardless, does it, is it distracting? Let me know how this video's setup is. The actual PVV question of the day, because PVV, I gotta ask you guys. This is a question that I saw the other day online. I'm gonna read it to you. Okay, here we go. Would you rather have a 100% chance of winning $1 million or a 60% chance of winning $1 billion? That's tough. That's a tough question. Let me know down in the comments what your answer is. Hashtag PVV. 100% chance of winning a million. 60% chance of winning a billion. My answer, drum roll please. 100% chance of winning a million dollars. See you guys in the next video. Peace.